The need for a daytime collimation test for Cassegrainian mirrors became apparent to me in 1967 when I was exhibiting my Ceramata telescope at the Cellophane Convention in Vermont. I discovered in the early evening that I'd have to start from scratch to recollimate it, which in fact proved to be impossible. I recognized then the true need for a simple daytime test to get this done. In 2004, I remounted the telescope and included some unusual features for the secondary attachment that proved to be fortuitous for the ultimate solution which followed in 2007. Typically for a Newtonian telescope, a laser collimator is usually inserted into the eyepiece, eyepiece station and that is adjusted together with the diagonal mirror so that when the laser beam is, is illuminated, it strikes right at the center of the primary mirror. From there, the beam is reflected right straight back along the optical axis, following the same paths to the diagonal and back to the eyepiece. As soon as the beam is, uh, strikes the point, point where it came from originally, uh, that, that verifies that it is collimated. The problem the Cassegrainian has is that the primary mirror is uh, usually perforated or there's a diagonal mirror or an obstruction which prevents the beam on axis from actually uh, striking any part of the primary surface. And it's the primary surface, it that angle error is what, what makes it either accolimated or not collimated. Under this proposed test, the laser uh, eyepiece station is behind the mirror and it is aligned so as to basically strike the secondary mirror but you'll note the secondary mirror ha will have been replaced with a with an aperture stop with like a sixteenth of an inch diameter hole exactly on axis of where the optics are going to be. In that manner, the laser beam, once it's aligned, uh, strikes, passes, actually hits the hole, goes through it, and continu continues along on axis. Then somewhere downstream, ab about the center of curvature distance of the primary mirror, a 3M type uh, reflective film is placed where the beam can strike strike the film close to the to center of curvature. What this does in effect is at the point where it strikes it creates a new light source and a, and a backscatter which sends a, a illumination pretty close to on axis, strongest on axis, and you'll notice the wave continues on aft until it uh, part of it is blocked by the secondary mirror but but a remaining portion bypasses that mirror and actually strikes the primary mirror. Now, since the the wave front has uh, struck the whole the whole mirror, it is reflected aft, and because it's close to the center of curvature, the beams that are come converging come close to the original point source. Uh, it'll be a ring shape because the secondary obstructed the center portion of it, and it will create an image on the reflective screen and we'll be able to see both the source and the ring. Now most of what follows uh, will be video but because it's of my sphere mounted telescope I've got a peculiarity that I have an additional mirror, a third mirror, a tertiary mirror uh, which changes the procedure in a sense that I've got to do an additional test uh, beforehand. Uh, this diagram shows the, the telescope and you'll notice what's added is that, sm that small mirror. The problem I have now is that I have to make sure that that the path from the laser from the eyepiece that's going to going to pass through the secondary will will be on axis to start with. Okay, what I'm trying to do is set up a uh, laser collimating system for this Cassegrain. I put the uh, secondary in and got a rough check for uh, the depths, make sure that the general locations are, are in properly in place. I removed the secondary and replaced it with a, a blank which is uh, cored out in the center and has a small kydex uh, film on the front side with a very small pinhole. Now the adjusting screws are four of them are on the outside so my center is clear and I've got clear holes running all the way through so with the the central pinhole at the center where the secondary would be, I basically put in a, uh, a pen type uh, laser finder pointer. Uh, I've also taped the, the switch so it's in the permanent on position. So in order to turn it on, 
I'll, I'll turn the screw on here. Now if you can see, I'm not sure if it's in that view, uh, the, that sets up the beam from the center of the secondary to go right down to a center target which corresponds to where it would be the center of the mirror. So that's my primary mirror axis. Once my adjusting screws are set up, then, then that will uh, coordinate to make sure that that is lined up on the optical axis that I, that I basically want everything to line up with. Now this is looking down my my high-powered eyepiece uh, finder. Uh, this is zoomed in. I put a small reflecting surface that that lets the laser pa pass on through it and as this is bounces back so it's very faint. You can see the gear at the back end which is right in the center of the of the mirror and you can see that the, the laser uh, pointer is right in the center of that gear so that is confirming that's my optical axis. Uh, now I will have to set up my my tertiary mirror so that when I install that that I can then uh, set set that up to the eyepiece and then of course uh, this diagonal this cover will drop in in place over it. You'll see, see its position and then this of course is adjustable to, to two positions. Okay I've got this pretty well lined up I try looking at the other reflection, a little hard seeing it, but that looks like that's going to be pretty close. So I'll say that's lined up on that axis. Okay, now what I'll do is, this is my adjusting screw, by rotating this, that places it over in the center. Now I can play with the same adjusting screw to get this uh, a little better center in that direction. I will not have any control on that since this is the one that's going to control my height, high resolution. I've reset the adjusting screws so now I'll, I'll turn this. So that looks, that should be pretty good. Okay, with that uh, first alignment set up, I removed the laser laser pointer out of the secondary assembly and uh, what we'll have now set up is we've defined the optical axis from the from the secondary sender of the, the secondary to the, uh, the diagonal to basically that particular eyepiece uh, station. Now I'll put a uh, another conventional laser pointer which is set up uh, collimated for inch and quarter eyepieces in that eyepiece holder and using the adjusting screws I'll line up that laser so that it goes down through the tertiary mirror and can bounces back up and goes through the original pinhole at my secondary, my dummy secondary. The task now will be to uh, align this laser so that it goes right back down on, on that exact uh, <clears throat> axis that was traced out by setting that tertiary mirror and aligning uh, the center of this to the uh, center line of uh, the perforated pinhole in the in the actual secondary disc. Okay, I've set up the collimator in the eyepiece. Uh, now, this is my secondary. That is the uh, that is the pinhole that I'm going to try to hit with my target. Just as a note, that pinhole you're seeing is actually at the secondary mirror position and you're seeing it reflected in the primary mirror. Yeah, it looks like uh, that should work. Okay, now I've got the eyepiece going right down, hitting a secondary mirror, and coming back. Now this is the uh, laser spot on the secondary mirror, and it's coming back right along the optical axis, going right through everything, and that should be the thing coming right through the optical center. Okay, now we have the uh, laser beam 
hitting his tertiary mirror, then passing right on straight through the uh, the pinhole at the at the dummy secondary. Now continuing on in that direction, at approximately the center of curvature, I have set up a uh, a reflector, 3M film reflector. You can see the the laser beam giving you a virtual pinhole, and right next to it you see. Uh, the reflection of this of the primary mirror. So now my, that's my collimating target is to combine those two those two elements. Okay, with a pretty pretty close in adjustment. See, as I do my adjustments, as the whole telescope moves, it's not that critical. Pretty close to this point. Okay, this looks uh, pretty close. Uh, In summary, and as related for a simple Cassegrainian telescope, the secondary mirror is removed and replaced with an aperture stop. Laser collimator is inserted in the eyepiece holder behind the primary mirror. It is turned on and the beam directed through the secondary aperture stop. The beam then passes through and strikes a beaded film reflector which is behind or near the primary center of curvature. This reflector returns the beam dispersion aft back towards the primary mirror. Sufficient energy strikes the primary to return it to the film reflector itself and to create a ring image near the original laser strike. The primary may now be adjusted to where the images are coincident. When they are coincident, the primary is collimated and the secondary mirror may be replaced and collimated conventionally.